Condor Hudson Bay. Oh my god, what a knife. Here we have it. This is the Condor Knife and Tool Hudson Bay fixed blade made in El Salvador. Okay, a Latin American country from Central America. If you're not familiar, there's, there's the Hudson Bay markings. And before diving into details, let's, let's give you a quick um, you know, rundown of what we have here. So uh, it's a large sort of fixed blade variety, a thick, stout, hard on, on wood, uh, really dependable um, and, and heavy. <laughs> That's your 30 second review, okay? But the name is awesome. I just love the name. Hudson Bay being, being, a, uh, being a, a fan of that part of North America, uh, it really sings, uh, it really sings to me. You know, in one of my reviews of the Becker BK-16, I talked about a book called Alone Against the North, where the author ventures out into the Hudson Bay lowlands. So it's a really cool story. This person has a lot of books. Um, on the topic, similar similar areas, similar uh, trips that he does. His name is Adam Schultz. I recommend you check him out. But the Hudson Bay is, uh, I just love the name. Let's talk about specs, guys. We have uh, overall length of 13 inches, which is 330.2 millimeters, if you're interested in millimeters. The blade length is 8.5 inches, which is 215.9 millimeters. The thickness really important attribute of a knife is 3 and 16 which is 4.76 to 5 millimeters the handle length a big topic for the condor hudson bay it's only 4.5 inches which is 114.3 millimeters okay the blade steel is the condor's 1075 high carbon steel the finish on the blade is uh, what condor calls the classic finish it's supposed to be a hammered finish Hit it with a hammer and you get that look. Um, you can see some uh, indentations on the knife. Uh, some defects came like that from factory. Although I have been hammering it on wood with low, little signs. Okay. And the weight is a whopping 20.48 ounces, which is a pound and 28. One that one that 28 pounds enough of the boring spec here's the sheath that it comes with the excellent condor uh, leather sheath that you normally get in your knives if you didn't watch my condor low drag this was the sheath from that knife okay both really excellent uh, this one is a little bit lighter not sure why maybe the oil in the hands who knows but here's the low drag sorry the, the hudson base sheath what i really love about it and you don't get on the low drag is this function. What does that do? Is that a fan? Is that to cool you off in the, on the hot night on the tent? No, it allows you to wear this on your hip like this. And as you sit down, you move it out of the way. As you lay down in your hammock to sleep at night, you move it out of the way. That is extremely important on a large fixed blade as you walk around camp and you sit down on a log you don't have your comfortable chair in, in those areas you have whatever you can get a rock a wet rock a log that's that's you know on the floor so this is this is a great idea guys uh, in many circles this would be called a dangler although it's technically not a dangler but it has served the same function okay Look how the knife sits flush, almost flush with the handle with, with the belt loop, so it won't it won't get in the way as you walk around. Really well thought out. I wish all the leather sheets from Condor had that functionality. Let's just talk about the looks for a second, guys. Don't you don't you agree with me that the looks of this knife are just killers? Look at that, it's just a killer. Look at the simple lines. Not a lot of curves, just this uh, almost a straight sweeping up um, the back spine here. You get a bit of a bowie clip, and then the edge has enough belly, enough straight portions. Um, simple wooden walnut handle with the brass pins. Um, very simple in its appearance. You got some flare in the back here that allows you to come down a little bit, although I caution you, it's not meant for. Um, for, for coming back too much because you only have four and a half inches. If your hands are large like mine, that's all you have to work with. So if you come down, you're going to be hanging a little bit too much for comfort. Remember, this is a heavy blade. There's a lot of weight in the front. 
and not in handle. The balance point is definitely higher up than in most knives. See? Just because of how much metal you have. So I'll quickly go over the materials. You have Condor's excellent 1075. I've been using that steel not for long, not for long, for a couple of months only, but I've been hard on it. I've been hard on wood, I've been carving a lot with it, I've been hitting wood like in strikes non-stop for days, and it's holding up, not in this knife, in, in 1075 in general. I have been using it heavily uh, on these two knives, mostly on the low drag. But I do have some testing to show you guys on the on the Hudson Bay as well. Okay, so we have that 1075 is hardened to uh, probably lower um, the Rockwell, um, Rockwell hardness. Um, if, if the low drag serves as any indication, it's probably in the low 50s. Okay, but I just um, I wanted to also mention the handle though it's it's wood, it's walnut, okay, which is a hard wood. It's supposed to be relatively stable uh, with an asterisk. Remember that any wooden handle can begin to crack with variations of temperature and humidity. So be mindful of that. But this is this handle is uh, is a good test bed for many knife aficionados that like to modify it. I've seen people come uh, remove a lot of metal. To make the handle longer right that way they have more to grip on i've seen people do grooves on it replace the wood by other materials like g10 or micarta or you name it sand it down to make it more grippy that's actually something that i may do on the knife if i am to keep it and i cannot say that i'm going to keep it um, there's one big reason for that and that is um, number one i don't have the time to be going through those modifications and then um, um, there, there's there's something about the balance of the knife that just doesn't sing to me. Maybe because I haven't had a knife that's so broad and so thin at the back that looks like a chef knife for for the woods. Um, I think it may be something. I think it may be that. Just the balance is very front heavy. You know, um, I I always thought that having a front heavy knife would be really good for chopping, and it is. I just don't like the way it feels. Um, I don't like the I don't like the the shortness of the handle. I, I wish I had a lot more to grab on. This knife has so much weight that sometimes you may you, you feel like you want to hand, grab it with two hands or come really far back. That's how that's how different the the balance is on this knife. Yes, I know I'm picky. You know, well, once you handle many knives, you begin to <laughs> you get really picky on the balance and performance and those things. Um, that's just the way how I feel about it. Okay uses well heavy duty survival camp knife this is really thick you know it's not close to a quarter inch thickness but it's it's, it's thick enough to withstand en enough abuse you can baton and chop all day because of the not just the sheer size of the metal that you have here um this is a heavy duty camp woods blade chopper for sure okay um uh, let me see if I need to add anything else. The spine is not 90 degrees, so it's not super sharp for, for striking sparks. You can fix that with a file easily, perhaps even sandpaper. I really like the finish on the, the hammer finish. It, it gives it a classic look. I do like the fact that it's made in El Salvador. I have no issues whatsoever, and I do like to see other parts of the world producing knives other than Taiwan, China, the US, Italy and Taiwan, um, you know what I mean? Um, um, and those are my thoughts, so thank you very much for joining me guys. Um, it's, it's probably not a knife for me, uh, you may love the looks, I suggest you try it if you really like the looks. Um, for the size and the cutting performance, it's, it's kind of economical, this is just about $60, which is not a lot of money. For knives that are that are this high quality, um, you know, you, you get an SE or you get um, any other fixed blades like a Becker. You're gonna even on Terrier, you're gonna be closer to a hundred dollars or, or more in many cases. So for well uh, under a hundred dollars, you get a a lot of steel and a lot of performance with a classic look and an excellent excellent leather sheath. So you know, make your choice. Make your choice. I made mine. Thank you.